it's Monday, July 30th. I got out of my shift at 11.30, which is super early. So I decided that I would drive up to Mount Holyoke College to visit a certain person. <laughs> so, this is Isha. We vlogged back in college to each other. Now I do a lot of vlogs and Isha's in the lab doing exciting things that I don't understand. <laughs> She's here for a Gordon Research Conference. Yes! on topo isomerases. I don't know how you can spend five days and 14 hours a day on topo isomerases. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot. Anything you want to say to the camera? Um, hi, long time no see. I have not vlogged in years and I keep meaning to and I keep forgetting. Oh, you know what I could do? Is I could insert a clip from like a really old vlog. Do it. <laughs> Good morning, Isha. Saturday. Good morning, Florence, it's Saturday. Breakfast. <laughs> So tiny. Back when we were last making vlogs, I was still pre-med. Yeah! And then like, I was like, actually, I really like research, so I went into research. And now I'm a PhD candidate two years into my PhD, so... She passed her polls! Which I learned what those are! <laughs> so, she's a PhD student now, and I'm an MD student now, and we're in our third year, and it's very warm, so I'm, I'm, gonna, warm. I'm gonna stop filming. Okay, bye! Hi again! It's near the end of my medicine rotation. On my last day off before my exam, I know, great timing, right? I thought I would make a little video and talk about how the rotation went. First, an overview of some logistics. My medicine rotation was six weeks long and I spent all six weeks on the general internal medicine service. During that time, I rotated on several different teams. Each team consisted of an intern, a resident, and an attending. As part of the team, I took responsibility for several patients who I followed throughout their time with our team. Each day generally goes like this. I get to the hospital at around 6.15 and I read up on my patients who had not been discharged the day before and were still in the hospital. At around 6.30 I go with my intern to intern sign out where the night teams report on anything that happened to our patients overnight. After that, we start pre-rounding on our patients. Rounds formally start at around 8 a.m., though the attending in charge of my particular team usually doesn't start them until around 8.15 or 8.30. Morning rounds consist of my attending, resident, intern, and me talking through each of the patients that we have on our list. The intern presents most of the patients on the team, but any patients that I have are presented by me to the attending and the rest of the team. Then my attending, resident, intern, and I will all go see certain patients together. If we have time, we'll see every single patient on our service. Otherwise, we'll see patients who are being discharged that day, patients who are particularly sick, or any patients who have acute issues that we want to address that morning. On most days, the lunchtime hours are pretty busy. From 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., we have something called a morning report where the residents and any students who are present will go over cases, talk about various subjects that are important in internal medicine in terms of patient care and management, things like that. From 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., there's an additional hour of educational activities called the Intern Summer Survival Series. After summer survival ends, we're usually free to do whatever we want. This can include additional patient care activities as needed, sometimes there are physical diagnosis rounds, sometimes we are free to study, just depending on how much is going on on our team that day. Sign out usually takes place at around 4 p.m. after which I get to go home. If I'm on long call that day, that means that I stay past 4 p.m. sign out until around 8 p.m when the night team comes in to take over from us. When I'm on long call, my team is responsible for admitting any new patients that come in. We go to see them in the emergency room and we work them up directly. Otherwise, there's usually another resident who is responsible solely for admissions and who does those during the day. So that's what my schedule's been like for the last couple of weeks. It's pretty complicated actually now that I think about it and it takes a while to explain on its own, but hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Now onto my actual thoughts about the whole thing. What did I think of my internal medicine rotation now that it's almost over? Or by the time you're watching this video, already over. Inpatient internal medicine is a lot to take in when you're first getting started, and even though I was just coming from another inpatient rotation, surgery, it was still a big adjustment. You have to manage sometimes 20 or more problems in a single visit, and you have to make sure you keep track of them all. It's a lot to take in, and it was pretty hard to follow my first week or two. I felt like I was drowning in information all the time, I still kind of feel that way sometimes, but a little less so now. If you had heard me talk about my rotation the first week or two, you would have heard me be pretty frustrated about how much information there was and the impossibility of being able to understand it all. Of course, the thing about internal medicine is it's 
medicine. It's like everything at once. And so I still don't understand like 99% of what we talk about. The thing about medicine though is that's okay. It took me a little while to get used to, but I did grow to enjoy the process of thinking through a diagnosis and talking through my clinical reasoning with the rest of my team. One situation that I found particularly interesting and that happened sometimes during our rotation, was a situation where different members of my team disagreed about what to do with a particular patient. When team members disagreed, that was actually a really good learning experience for me because I got to see the differences in people's thought process and I got to see a little bit of the art of medicine. This is one of the advantages of team-based care, which is kind of the standard in inpatient settings. You get multiple pairs of eyes looking on the same patient, the same clinical situation, and you might come to some different conclusions. And it's interesting to talk through why you came to the conclusion you did and put together ultimately a plan and a consensus that works best for the patient. During my first two years of med school, I kept hearing over and over and over again, third year really helps cement your clinical knowledge because for every condition, you end up associating a patient with that condition. I didn't really understand what that meant at the time, but now I definitely do. If you ask me about HIV, I will immediately think of a particular patient that I was taking care of who was in the hospital for like three weeks or something like that. It was a really long time. If you ask me about pleural effusions or diabetic ketoacidosis or atrial fibrillation or lung cancer, any of those conditions and so many more immediately bring a patient case to my head. And when I think about how we cared for those patients, both what we did following standard guidelines and when we strayed from those guidelines, it really helps put together a picture better in my head and it helps me understand how the art and the science of medicine kind of blend together. It's hard to put what I've learned about internal medicine into words because there is so much that you learn without really realizing it. Another thing that I will say about this rotation is that my knowledge of pharmacology has increased dramatically. I am really bad at farm. I had trouble memorizing drugs. I just could not place associations between drugs and side effects and conditions and mechanisms in my head but seeing them work on a patient and seeing why we use this drug for this thing and that drug for that other thing helped so much in my understanding of different drugs. What I'm trying to say is that I've been learning so much more when I'm actually applying my knowledge rather than I'm just trying to absorb it and stuff it into my brain, which never works as well as you think it will. At the end of my medicine rotation, I still feel like I don't really know anything and I still feel pretty overwhelmed by all of the knowledge that is within the field of medicine, but I think I have a little better idea of how to tackle it now, how to make frameworks for easier access in my brain, and how to use it better to treat patients, which is really what all this knowledge is being used for in the end. At the time that I'm filming this, it is T minus one week until my internal medicine shelf exam, after which I will have one weekend of freedom, and then I'll have my weekends back. I know I mentioned this in last month's video, but it bears repeating. I'm so excited to have my weekends back. Okay, that's enough rambling from me for now. My next rotation is primary care. I'm really looking forward to it, not just because the schedule will be easier, but also because I am really interested in primary care, and so I'm hoping that doing this rotation can help narrow my decision-making a little bit better. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.